Hello students, welcome to the next lecture on the GATE 2024 Mathematics. Today, I will explain you how you can solve the numerical analysis questions with the help of the shortcut tricks in this lecture. Myself, Dr. Harishkar, you can simply follow my YouTube channel where you can find the GATE Mathematics playlist and you can see the various lectures available at here. Apart from them, you can also see the topic wise lectures related to the numerical integration, maxima, minima and many more available at this playlist. If you are new to my YouTube video, you can simply subscribe my YouTube channel and scan and join my WhatsApp group. So let's start with the first question. P of F is a polynomial of degree at most 2. This is given to you and Fx is my given to be this one. So can you solve this? Clearly say it is my x cube and minus x cube provided x is my positive or x is my less than 0. Fine. Now your target is to interpolate the points as minus 1, 0 and plus 1. This is my x. What is my fx corresponding to this? It is my plus 1 because when x is good negative, it's here 0 and 1. Can you write the pol interpolating polynomial that is f of x directly from here? Clearly say it's a degree less than 2. This is my x square. Fine. Otherwise, if you, if you don't uh, find it quickly, you can find the divided difference. What is the first divided difference? Minus 1. Second is plus 1. What is the second divided difference? It's a 2 divided by 2 is a 1. So therefore, my polynomial will be, I can take this one. So that is a 1 plus x plus 1 of minus 1 plus x plus 1 x minus 0 of plus 1. So if you open this bracket, this plus x here minus plus x, you can see x will be cancelled, 1 will be cancelled again is the x square. Fine. Now you will get as p of x is my x square. Now I can substitute this value at here. Now my target is to find the maximum of this. I consider g is my fx minus p of x. What is f is x square? This minus x square. Now or I can do like x square is a common. So it is mod x minus 1. So your target is to find the supremum over the interval minus 1 to 1. Very simple question. You can see whenever x lies between this mod of x minus 1 is always less than 0. So what does it mean? x square is my always positive. So when you multiply them, it is always less than 0. That means g of x is always less than 0. So what is my supremum? The supremum will be my 0. That's over. There is no need to solve the problem. So that is my 0 is the right answer. This is the first method that you can solve it without any calculation. There is one more method. What is that method is? I can discretize this g here. This is fx minus x square. So that means it is a x cube minus x square or minus x cube minus x square provided x is my greater than 0 or x is less than 0. Fine. Then how you can find the maximum? We all know the first derivative to be 0, second derivative to be less than 0. So what is the g dash? It is my 3x square minus 2x minus 3x square minus 2x provided x is greater than 0, x is less than 0. Can you find the critical point? From the first case, the critical points are 0 and 2 by 3. From the second case, x will be 0 and x will be minus 2 by 3. Now we can see whether this property is satisfied or not. What is my g dash? 6x minus 2 minus 6x minus 2. When x is greater than 0, x is less than 0. So clearly say when x is equal to 0, what is my g double dash? Minus 2 which is less than 0. So this is the point of maxima. Fine. When x is equal to 2 by 3, that is a positive number, g dash is my positive, you can substitute. So that means this is not the point of maxima. x is equal to minus 2 by 3, so g double dash I can substitute here, again it's a greater than 0, so this point is also not the point of maxima. So how many point of the maxima you have? Only one point and the other two points are my boundary points, so minus 1 and plus 1. Now I can found the value of the g. What is the value of the g at 0? 0. What is the value of the g at 1? 0. What is the value of the g at minus 1? I can see minus 1 plus 1. That's again 0. 
so in each case answer will be zero so that why you can see that my first approach that is a without any calculation you will get the right answer in a simple manner of this case it is always be less than equal to zero fine and it is a correct answer you can see if you draw the graph of this you can see between the minus 1 to plus 1 this is the answer of this maximum anyhow in the examination you are unable to draw this graph but i will tell you this approach because mod x minus 1 is always less than 0 x square is always positive so g of x is always less than 0 so that point is my maximum point look at the second example a is given to be here the jacobi method converges for any when it will be convergent when you prove that if i consider this is my b when you prove that b matrix is my diagonal dominant so can you write the first matrix b a plus epsilon 2 plus minus 1 here find 1 2 plus epsilon minus 1 minus 1 of this so now you can see 2 plus epsilon is greater than of 1 plus 1 absolute value of this it is always satisfied because alpha epsilon is my strictly positive number so that means similarly for the second row similarly for the third row that means this matrix is my diagonal dominant once the matrix is my diagonal dominant it means the jacobi method will converse for any initial approximation so that means this is my correct answer once the matrix is the diagonal dominant the gauss seidel method also convergent for any initial approximation so that is also the correct answer because the matrix is the same one and epsilon is a positive number is a very crucial role in this question so both are my correct answers okay look at this another one what is given to you is a initial value problem and it's a range kuta second order what is the shortcut tips as i gave you in my range kuta lecture if you watch my this is if you watch my range kuta lecture you can see here is my this one then you can easily solve this question with the help of the 10 second time period what is the shortcut tips i have given you whatever the k2 this coefficient of the h coefficient of the k must be same alpha is equal to beta must be same so you can see it is not satisfied this is satisfied this is satisfied this is satisfied what is the second tips i have given you look at your recurrence formula your a plus b must be one you can see a plus b is not one a plus b one a plus b one third trick the relation between alpha and beta b that is here is k2 coefficient of the k2 is my b so b is 1 over 2 alpha fine so b b is my half is it 1 over 2 alpha no so it means this option is cancelled it is b is my 3 over 4 is it 1 over 2 alpha alpha is my 2 over 3 yes it is a 3 over 4 so the right answer is a is my correct answer remember this k2 this written is k2 coefficient of the k2 is my b so b should be here and if you write the a you can see it is 1 over this number okay look at this another question a is my real number h is my positive real numbers twice differentiable function which interpolate the point at degree less than equal to 2 of oh, very, very sign a is the any real number I can assume a is my 0, h is any positive number, I can assume h is my 1, fine. Then these three points will be minus 1, 0, plus 1 and your target is to interpolate the degree at most 2. So what is that? Can you find the polynomial? It's the same question of the previous one, that is my x square, fine. Any function of degree less than 2. First of all, it can never be one x plus 1 because it is not satisfied. So, definitely a polynomial of degree 2 is my here. Then, this is my pfx. Fine. pfx my x here. Then, I have to find this value. What is the second derivative of this? Second derivative of this is my 2. So, what is that a? So, my target is to find the value at a 0. It should be p double dash at 0. What is the p double dash at 0 is my 2 or in general 
we can see g double dash of x is my p double dash of x 2 now what is the degree d is the largest degree so i can differentiate i can integrate them is a 2x plus c1 g of x will be x square plus c1x plus c2 now you can see that what is the largest degree this is the largest degree so the largest degree is my 2 is the right answer you can see so very simple if you i i can i always told you you can choose a number which is very very simple manner a is 0 a, h is 1 you can assume that any number a is 4 h is 7 but that will take a lot of the calculation but the easiest one is here so 2 is my right answer okay look at this another one p1 and p2 are the two fixed point of the function this fine okay so fixed point and sequence generated by here what is the definition of the fixed point that means if you draw the graph of the given g and on this here so what is the graph of this x is equal to 0 it will be minus of 2 and rest of them is increasing so that means the graph will be like here fine so this is the one point of intersection this is the one fixed point so i call this is my p1 is less than p2 this is my p1 this is my p2 fine now which of the following statement is or are correct let's start with the uh, first case xn converges to the p1 this one if you can take any x node between the p1 and p2 so how many cases you have either i can take x note at here or i can take x note at here firstly let's assume i can take x note is this what is the definition of the fixed point is you can assume you can take a point you can find the point on the graph this is the graph of gx you can move on this point and then move on the y is equal to x line so the, because i can never move on this line because there is no y is equal to x i can move on this so the next point is this is basically my x1 if i start from the x node i can substitute here i can get the x1 then again move on this point on the graph and then move on this so that means they are moving towards the p1 so definitely it will converge on the p1 if i take on this side if i draw the point on this again there is no y is equal to x line so i have to move on this then again on this point this is my x1 then again on this and this again it are moving towards the p1 so but he said p p2 so this option is cancelled fine now look at this second option i can draw the graph again so this is my y is equal to x this is the graph of here now what is the second point is xn converges to the p2 if i take x naught which is outside of this here so let's say I can take this number is my x naught. So take the point on this on the graph. This is the graph of the this is the graph. Fine. So I can take the one point on this, then it move on this line, then off on this it will intersect here. Again it will move here. So that means it will converge toward the plus infinity. That is away from the P2. But he said P2. This option is cancelled out. Fine now this is the line now take any point which is less than of the x node le less than of the p node so i can assume this point so this point is my here i can draw this point on this x here again i can move on this then or this so definitely it will move towards this is the point of p1 it will move towards the p1 so that means yes it will converge to the p1 so a and d are my right answer of this problem and you can see it's a very simple approach you can solve it by using graphical representation i again see you you can scan and join my whatsapp group for the various parts we will see the next lecture on the linear algebra till then you can simply like share and comment on my videos best of luck students happy